These are what I call my crumpled stilt skins. Let's learn how to do those today. Hello, 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 my daily creatives. How are you? This is day 35 of our daily creative practice. And today we are going to make quick spattered backgrounds with Mod Podge. All right, so how are we gonna do that? Mm, very easy and very much fun and very, very messy. Let me hold this up and let you see an example of this wonderful, fun background that is made with things that you already have on hand. There's three ingredients in our little mixture here. We're going to use one of the bags that uh, from the produce department of your grocery store. So save those when, because I find those are really fine and they're really thin and they make really good marks on paper. And then we're going to use Mod Podge. Any kind of Mod Podge works. We're going to use, I'm using a navy blue acrylic and a little bit of water to make this happen. So of course, I gessoed my page my page us. We're doing a spread today uh, a couple of days ago so I could get several pages ready for us to play with. And this is our mixture. I love these tiny little espresso cups that I found. Just little foam cups. They are great for these wonderful little projects like this. So the ratio of Mod Podge to paint is about three to one. So if it's three teaspoons of Mod Podge to one teaspoon of acrylic, or three tablespoons, or three cups, whatever you want to do, however you want to make that happen. And then I just add a few drops of water in. Getting some water out of my little bag over here and mix it up really, really well. And I would say it is the consistency of, consistency is milky. So let me just put that on there and let you see. But it's also glazed, so it will dry and you will see through this. And the Mod Podge allows this to um, to make the paint a little more translucent. It's not going to be totally transparent, but it definitely is a little translucent. So let me kind of rub that back. I kind of did a pretty thing on my um, gesso on that page, didn't it? Mm, that may be a trick in the future. <laughs> So let me put some page protection in before we start. And of course, this is just wax paper. All right. So what I'm going to do is very darn easy. I'm just going to take an old paintbrush. It has to be small enough to fit in here. And I am just going to come in and put a few dabs of my mixture around on my plastic. Just a few. Don't need too many. And then I'm going to take my plastic and fold it over on itself and scrunch it up. Try not to get too awful messy for you. And then we are going to fold it again and make sure it's spread around pretty good. We want several surfaces to be covered. We don't want a really blotchy spot, but that's okay too. All right, so here goes. I'm going to take it and I'm gonna fold this up just a little bit. And then I am going to plop it down and press very gently. I'm not pressing really hard because I just want this 
gently on there. And you can move it to another section and press again, gently. I love, love, love the marks this makes. It makes your own marks. You don't have to overthink it. And I'm doing way more than I normally would on a page. But you can also have some of your little um, index cards or something handy to do some printing on if you want. I don't happen to have any right now. So isn't that cool? Let me hold this up and get it close for you to see all those marks. And I hope you can see the translucency in there. And that took what? Just a few seconds. Duh. And so my best trip and tip and hack for you on this is to take some cornstarch from your um, kitchen. Now this isn't quite dry. I would probably let it dry a little more to the touch so no wet came off on your fingers when you're doing it. But it works just as well when it's a little bit wet. Sprinkle the cornstarch on there. Rub it around. And this does a couple of things. This um, helps the pages not stick together because sometimes painted pages will have a tendency to stick. And it will also help our paint dry a little. And it also lightens our paint somewhat when it is still wet. So now let me show you those areas. I really like that. I'm just going to take a little brush and kind of brush over here. Just a fluffy little brush. But look what happened now. Look at these places. I am loving what is going on in here and here. It kind of lightened it, but it also gave it some interest, didn't it? And now I am ready to fold my page and nothing is gonna happen. It's not gonna stick. It is not going to be stuck in the future. And I can go ahead and work on that right now if I want to. So I'm gonna come back here. And this one was done after the, um, the glaze had dried. So that's why this one still has a little bit of the darker blue hue on there because I allowed the paint to dry. But see, it works just as well when the paint and glaze is wet. So I'm gonna take a white paint pen and come in here and do some doodles like we did yesterday because you know me, everything has a doodle somewhere on it. So let me just, and this is kind of a uh, chisel tip. Yay for calligraphy. So that's pretty cool. Let me come in here and do a little R. That's pretty neat. And you can accent spaces. You can do dots and drips. And this one, what I'm liking right here, let me show you, since this is a calligraphy pen and it has that uh, 45 degree edge, we could actually use that to make some stitching in some wonderful places in our book. I love that. So just continue on doing your doodles and your fun things and your playings. Oh, I love that section too where I just gave it a little bit of marbled look there. So anyway, have fun with this today. Play with this. 
um, see how many pages you can make and different colors. You can actually come in here and do different colors on these pages if you like. And this is the little end piece I cut off. And I think we could take that and just dip it in our paint. And I'm gonna practice on a little page first. But after you dab a little bit of it off, you can bring that into your book and create even some more fun interest in there. I'm loving that. So look at these little spots. So just kind of, again, think outside the box always. Think about what you can do. Think about using the tools you have on hand. Think about raiding your kitchen for some supplies. And we will be doing some more of that as the year progresses because I love to get in the spice cabinet and make paint mixtures and potions. So we will be doing that. So come back every day this year and see what I am going to get into because you never really know where we're going to go in any one day. So this is Rebecca and get into your contagious creativity and pass it on. For today, may joy be with you all.